Remember that really bad anti-masker movie I talked about a while ago? Well, the people behind that movie made a Christmas movie. Let's talk about it. Folks! I honestly didn't think I was going to do a Christmas video this year, but I found out about the release of this movie recently, and I couldn't live with myself if I didn't talk about it. So this movie is called A Law for Christmas, and the synopsis is, a young and aspiring politician has to leave the city for her career and finds her vocation and true love in the countryside. So really taking a narrative risk in the realm of Christmas rom-coms and getting my dirty little hands on this movie was no easy task. I wanted to stream it online, and figured I could because that's what the website told me I could do. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to stream it anywhere online. So I just streamed my comedy special instead that is now on sale until the end of the year. Yeah, so if you're at home for the holidays and you want to get away from your weird-ass family for a little bit, click the link in the description and enjoy my comedy special Keep Busy. Okay, thank you so much. I was unable to stream A Law for Christmas online. So the only way to watch this movie was to order the physical DVD copy for $10.90. I decided against getting the Blu-ray version of the movie because I'm not a dad in 2011. Dude, they also had this great option to buy the DVD bundle for $76, where you get 10 DVDs in the price of six. The goal is to reach as many people as possible with the message. Give away the DVDs to friends and family who don't know Jesus yet. Yeah, this is a Christian movie. I don't know if I mentioned that. But damn, I'm excited, dude. I'm, uh, I'm really excited to get to know Jesus in this movie. <laughs> Imagine you put the DVD in and it's like one of those cheesy video dating tapes from the 80s. Hey, I'm Jesus. I'm looking for a girl who's athletic. You know, maybe someone who does CrossFit. Just a little joke. I'm also looking for someone who's adventurous in the bedroom. I'm not trying to be inappropriate, but I do have two extra holes. Oh, yeah. And dude, Law for Christmas has rave reviews already. We've got one from Jeffrey Wilson, a Wall Street best-selling author. Okay. Well, what's super funny about that is if you scroll down just a little bit on the website, we find out that Jeffrey is also an actor in this movie. Well, I guess he goes by Jeff down here. Maybe that's his twin. I don't know. We've also got a five-star review from the producer of this film and director and star of 2025, Joshua Wesley. And if you're not up on the lore surrounding this guy, it's pretty wild. TLDR, this dude posted a pic of his girlfriend with the caption, finally 18, when he himself was 27. And furthermore, in the caption, he put, you've been my best friend for four years. Ew. Epic groomer moment. And a month after that, he proposed to his uh, 18 year old girlfriend so super fucked up but anyways i had to order the dvd but unfortunately they don't ship to canada so i had to get my manager who lives in the u.s to order this dvd and then once he got the dvd he mailed me the dvd to uh, canada fuck and it's like guys if you really want to spread the word of jesus so much maybe ship internationally i could have done a whole fucking video about the website we'll get into the movie in a second but i just want to show you one more funny thing there's a section at the bottom where they talk about the success of their movie 2025. And they put on the website that the movie was viewed 10 million times. Or sorry, the movie was 10 million times watched. Seems like a high number, right? But he obviously doesn't mean like 10 million people purchased the movie to watch it. Because when you look at my video that I made about that movie, look how many views it has. 10 million. And honestly, dude, Respect. That's genuinely hilarious. That's like being stoned to death in medieval times and being like, everybody's looking at me. Okay, without further ado, let's talk about possibly the worst Christmas movie ever made, A Law for Christmas. The movie starts with an introduction to the main character of the film, Gloria. She's a politician in DC who only cares about her job. But worst of all, she hates Christmas. Christmas is a day like any other. No, it's not. I'm not really sure how high up she is in the government, though. Like, I'm not quite sure if she's just another government employee or if, like, she's the boss. Gloria, boss. Oh, never mind. So Gloria's assistant tells her that there's a new job opening. They have a new position open in the ministry department. And Gloria immediately takes the job without knowing any of the details because... It doesn't matter. And the movie spends a lot of time showing the audience how Gloria is just like the worst person ever. She fires a guy for seemingly no reason right before Christmas. I'm so sorry to tell you, but I have to let you go. She then suggests using the money intended for farmers to fund the installation of Wi-Fi in the subway system and then just not tell anybody about it, which I'm pretty sure is a crime. But she somehow convinces everyone that it's okay. You think the farmers are okay with using their money for the subways? They don't need to know. Okay, not bad. <laughs> 
We should tell the farmer. No. Okay, not bad. And this is where we get a great cameo. The next person to address the groom, sorry, the room, is Joshua. No! Thank you for the opportunity to talk with you about the school system. Yo, I do. <laughs> There's no fucking way, man. Of all things for him to talk about in his three seconds of screen time, he's gonna talk about children, dude. Oh my God. All right, guys, I'm here to talk about the elementary school system, the best place to find your wife. Oh. Fucking, wow, that's crazy. So Gloria gets the new job. Gloria, you got it. Awesome. But she still doesn't want to know what the position is because she wants it to be a surprise for some reason. I don't really care. I'll be a surprise. All right. But the next day, she's given the new position in person. It is with great honor to welcome our new Secretary of Agriculture, Gloria Winters. So yeah, after she tried stealing money from farmers, she was named the Secretary of Agriculture for the entire country without any expertise in the field and without any sort of interview or communication whatsoever. And you know, instead of having her in the White House delegating and overseeing all the agricultural operations for the whole country, the president wants Gloria to make a video campaign. Have you heard of this... Um new social media thing. We want to go viral <laughs> with a campaign highlighting the accomplishments of the administration. I think that's the marketing department's job, but the Secretary of Agriculture is tasked with the job of traveling to small town farms to make a viral video. And it's like, how many fucking Christmas movies have done this premise before? Reluctant businesswoman travels to a small town and learns the true meaning of Christmas. That's been done literally one million times. Winter Wonderlands weren't her thing until a little Christmas spirit melted her heart. And it's like, if you're gonna make an independent Christmas movie, why not fucking do something different? Like do something fucking interesting, you know? Do something crazy. But alas, Gloria, her assistant, and some fucking camera guy head out to a small town named Snow Point. And this is when we get the fastest title card ever. <laughs> Which, now that I think about it, that's like really smart. If the title card is super quick, the viewer forgets the name of the movie. So when they go to tell their friends how bad the movie is, and their friends are like, Oh my god, that sounds crazy. What's the movie called? You know, they'll be like, Oh my god. And this is where we meet the other main character of the movie. And his name is Christian Baker. He's not a Christian Baker, thank God. Because if he was a fucking Christian Baker, named Christian Baker, I would have broke this fucking DVD in half. Okay, and then I would have been left with nine DVDs. Yeah, I bought the bundle. Christian is actually the mayor of Snow Point. Mayor Chris Baker. And he also drives them around the entire time and sort of like keeps watch over them because I guess he has nothing better to do. We haven't had any federal politicians here since 1985 when William Bannon visited. Oh, really? Weird to keep that information so readily available, right? <laughs> yeah, 1984 was the last time a politician showed up here. Didn't end too well for him. So Christian drives him to the hotel where they'll be staying in Snow Point, and the hotel is actually owned by his sister, Carol. I'm um, great. Noel is frustrated. Yeah, dude. So far, we have characters named Christian, Carol, and Noel. Because it's a Christmas movie, gotta have Christmas names. Jesus, what's next, guys? There's gonna be a character named fucking Eggnog. My name is Eggnog. I've never seen the sun, and I eat mice. I eat mice for dinner! I fucking wish they had a little brother named Eggnog, like, living in their walls, and he's only allowed out during the holiday season. Dude, that'd be fucking awesome. That's what I mean when I say be interesting, you know? Have a little freak brother named Eggnog. Do something crazy! So they go to a farm to interview this farmer so they can make their viral video. And I can already tell this thing is gonna get so many views. A recently empowered tax reform law for farmers will ensure a federal assistant funding program and even better infrastructure on their behalf. Oh my god. Yeah, dude, a boring video of someone talking about laws and some fucking farmer aimlessly walking behind them like Bigfoot. I can see Jimmy Fallon laughing about this already. So you'll see, though, this is the most unbelievable part of this whole film. How the fuck is this video about farms gonna go viral? Realistically, you're gonna need, like, celebs and memes, right? And I love that. I'd love to see how an actual viral agriculture video shoot would go. Okay, so Ice Spice, if you could just start twerking on that tractor, we're gonna get Mr. Beast in here to start rizzing you up. And then uh, in the background, Timothy Chalamet, if you could get into that pickup truck and drive through that cornfield like you did in Interstellar, and then we're gonna pull out in a, from a fucking drone shot and show that you're actually driving a crop circle design in the cornfield of Kai Sanat and Baby Grunk. And 
action! So after they interview this guy who doesn't give them the answers they want, Gloria tells Christian that she's going to sit in the back of the bus on the way home and edit the video. On the way back, I'm going to sit in the back to edit the video with Joe. And that's what she does. There she is, sitting at the back of the bus. And this is when we see how fucked up Gloria is. They start editing the farmer's words together to like fit their script. Maybe try to blend it into each other a little more to make sure the cut isn't too visible. This job helping the local farmers here is great. And dude, the thing I love most about the Wesley's script writing is how little faith they have in the viewer to like understand what's going on. They got no faith in the viewer because they're giving it all to Jesus, man. They need every character to say how they feel and state why they do the things they do. Make his words fit the script. Make his words fit the script. We're corrupt, remember? We need to learn a lesson about Christmas. So they do this for a while. They go talk to another farmer. But this guy starts yelling at Gloria about the government and stuff. I work my butt off every day. And they're going at it, and he's interrupting her. Well, he was supposed to, but he was a little late on his lines. But we're trying to make it, so... You wanna, you wanna make my life easier? And then they both storm off all pissed off. And this is when a sad little girl approaches Gloria. Are you sad? I'm sad too. My dad makes me very sad. He cried last night. I never heard him cry before. He told mama that my name was Ty. So he had to sell some more Christmas presents. What makes you sad? What makes you sad? No, that is pretty sad though. Fucking farmer couldn't get his money up for the holiday, so he had to sell some of his daughter's Christmas presents. You know, that would make any kid upset, but it feels like she was more upset with the fact that her dad cries. My dad makes me very sad. He cried last night. I asked for a puppy for Christmas, but I don't even think I need one anymore. Turns out my dad was a little bitch this whole time. And dude, this movie is full of scenes that don't need to happen. Like the scene after the weird little girl goes up to Gloria. Sorry. Thanks for doing this today, though. See you later. Cool! Cool scene! What was the point of that? What did that- what does that do? What's that do for the greater good? And why not show the character he's talking to? Also, why show a scene of every single character filing onto the bus? And then a quiet scene of them driving for a while. And then another full scene of all of them getting off of the bus. Yo. Like, the audience isn't stupid. If you cut from the farm to the hotel, we're not gonna be like, Hey, how did they get there? They were just at the farm. I must have dementia. But as weird as that little girl was on the farm, their 20 second interaction completely changes Gloria's personality. It's like fucking night and day, dude. She's this like mean businesswoman who only cares about her job, talks to a sad girl for 20 seconds, and now she's like... It's so weird. She does a fucking full 180, dude. That's a, is that a Bible verse? Oreo 180? Because they go to a diner in town and now they're just like laughing and flirting with each other. It's funny to you, <laughs> laughing at me. No. No, I'm not. But I do love this scene because they tried writing like playful, like flirtatious banter between these two characters, but it literally sounds like two fucking chatbots talking to each other. I'll have the chicken sandwich with sweet potato fries and mayonnaise. Mayonnaise? Really? It's the best. <laughs> well, all right. What the fuck? Mayonnaise? Really? It's the best. Right, this is also when we find out that Christian used to live in the big city after he went to Harvard Law School. You went to Harvard. Yeah. And he was practicing law for a bit, but he stopped because that wasn't his plan. I should say it wasn't God's plan for my life. God's plan. Drake! Drake! God's plan. Drake. We don't have a lawyer within a two hour radius of this town. I don't know if that's really a flex. Like, he came back to be the only lawyer in the town, but he's not even a lawyer. He's a mayor now. So it's like, what? you don't have any lawyers here. Or cops. It's fucking lawless. I can do whatever I want. Dude, honestly, it low-key seems like that, though. Christian gives off, like, major cult leader vibes in this movie. This is my home. Everybody's fucking obsessed with him. These people, they're my family. He doesn't let people from the outside world visit the town unless he is with them the entire time, like, monitoring where they go and who they meet. Snowpoint is literally middle America north. Korea. So they keep talking for a bit and Christian makes some more references to God. It's not my plan I'm trying to follow. 
piss. Hey. And on their way out of the diner, they run into the farmer from earlier, and he's trying to sell his daughter's Christmas presents. So Christian, being the good guy he is, buys the presents off of him. Here you go. Thank you. But, like, he doesn't have a daughter or anything. So I feel like the actual nice thing to do would to be like, hey, man, just take this money, keep the presents, have a Merry Christmas. But no, he actually fucking takes the gifts from this guy. You're a great blessing for this town. <laughs> And especially for me. Yeah, thank you. Merry Christmas. Your daughter's toys will be great kindling for my fire. Back at the inn, Christian starts telling Carol that he's starting to like Gloria. She's kind-hearted and compassionate. I don't know where the fuck he got that from. You need to get this done now. But it's almost Christmas and I, I need this job. I'm sure you'll find another one. She's kind-hearted. With that attitude, you will never succeed. Jill, where is the jet? I love local small-town politicians. Passionate. This is so gross. And this scene is hilarious to me because they're trying to build some backstory uh, for Carol. So she starts telling her life story, which is fine, I guess, but she's telling her life story to her brother. Then after getting my master's in economics, working a year on Wall Street. It's like, yo, yo, he knows this already, right? He's, he's your brother. So yeah, after university, I got hired at the best law firm in the world. I know. I made a lot of money. And I had a big house. Biggest house you've ever seen. I know. I'm your brother. I, I see you all the time. But then I got fired for testing my reflexes with the judge's gavel. I know. So then I had to move back in with my family. It's not bad, but I do have to live with my brother now. And between you and me, I fucking wish he was dead. Yo, what the fuck? I hate him. Okay, keep this on the DL. But I actually used the last of my lawyer money to hire a hitman to fucking kill him tonight. What? No! No! <laughs> Gesundheit. So the next day, they take a private jet to a struggling farm to ask the farmers why they don't have any money, which is kind of like ripping someone's hair out than asking why they're balding. But on the way there, Gloria goes into this whole life story, which really doesn't fucking matter. And this conversation is a full five minutes of back and forth dialogue. And if you remember the 2025 movie, my main critique was that nothing like fucking happens. It's just talking. And it's the same with this movie. Every character in this movie is fluent in Japanese. It's just a bunch of idiots flapping their gums for two and a half hours. Yeah, did I mention that? This movie's two and a half hours long. And there's no actual conflict until like the hour 40 mark. And that's not even a real conflict either. But getting ahead of myself, this movie honestly could have been 20 minutes long. And even that is a stretch. So we get to another farm and start interviewing another angry farmer. And it's so fucking stupid because he's complaining about the government for obvious reasons. Whatever the government's willing to lend us, which ain't much anymore. And the whole time, Gloria's assistant is like angrily flipping through the script, upset that he's not not saying what they want him to say and it's like <laughs> why are you getting mad for him going off script if you never gave him a script if they were smart they would have just hired actors to pretend to be farmers so they could get them to say what they want them to say you know i'd rather be lied to than watch a bunch of boring crap and that's the realest shit i ever said they end up having dinner with the angry farmer and his family where they give some more references to god that you gave us the gift of your son jesus and the farmer keeps complaining about his job. It's not like I'm already working an 80-hour week. Grandpa, how about you buy a new tractor? When I first watched this, I fully thought the daughter was going to be like, How about you stop complaining? Grandpa, how about you, you stop complaining? How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? It's not like I'm already working an 80-hour week. And after some great human-like dialogue, New tractors cost more than the average home. Okay. Gloria and Christian go for a nice romantic walk in the... Soap? Is there a bunch of soap on the ground? I don't know what that is. I haven't seen real snow like this in years. DC snow is a mess. <laughs> DC snow is all wet and cold. I like this stuff. It's dry and fabric. So that night, Gloria is tossing and turning, racking her brain about these farmers, you know? She's thinking about those farmers. So she stays up all night and works on a plan to help the farmers, AKA, finally do her job. And the next day, she talks to the farmer about her big idea. There is a lack of modern equipment. Is that correct? Yes, definitely. If we had better equipment, we could cultivate all of our land, work more efficiently, increasing our profits that we could use to put back into growing our operation. It'd be the opposite cycle. Modern machines save time, money, and resources. 
And we lack all of that. Okay, a simple yes would have sufficed, but thanks. So Gloria comes up with the genius idea of creating a farmer's union. Would you any other farmers be interested in joining an organization like a union? Even though the National Farmers Union has existed since 1902. Yeah. But she calls this guy George. What can I do for you, Gloria? Who owns like a tractor company to get his business. Christian told you to call me? That's interesting. <laughs> okay. And obviously do another take because he said inch string instead of interesting. That's interesting. <laughs> That's interesting. What you said was fucking stupid. Though. If you're friends with Chris, I'm all ear. Yeah, dude, this proves my point of Christian being a fucking cult leader. The second anybody mentions Christian, they're like, oh yeah, he's the best. I love him. He's so sick. Yeah, I don't want to end up like eggnog. Christian is good. So now we cut to Gloria getting ready to go to dinner with Christian's family. And you know, usually you'd bring over a bottle of wine to a dinner party, but this is a Christian family movie. So she packs a bottle of her finest lemonade. Sorry, I forgot to mention this in the script, but this is an entire scene of Gloria emptying out her small purse into a bigger bag because the lemonade wouldn't fit into her purse. Just cut this out of the movie. Even though wine is like the most Christian beverage ever. Like, I don't think Jesus ever turned water into lemonade. Ooh, yum. This lemonade tastes exactly how I like it. Hot and sour. Yeah, all in a day's work. Hey, wait a second. So you drank some water. We waited here for like an hour, and then you shot a bunch of lemonade out of your, uh, what'd you call it again? Oh, my penis. Ah, okay. Did I, uh, did I just drink your pee? Yeah, big time. Okay, and that hot cocoa I had this morning, that was diarrhea. Okay, and that tablespoon of mayonnaise you made me eat last night, that was... Oh, don't worry, that was, that was actually just mayonnaise. Okay, thank God. <laughs> Whew. Close one. Mayonnaise is what I call my jizz. Jesus! Call me Jizzus! Blasphemy! But unfortunately, he already blasted for him. Sorry, guys. So they get to Carol's house, and Gloria delivers the lemonade. I think I've seen this bottle of lemonade before. <laughs> Did I miss something? Never mind. And if you're confused, I don't blame you. I don't know if they edited something out from earlier and then forgot to cut out this callback, but there isn't a single mention of lemonade prior to this. I miss something. And remember how I got mad at everybody having Christmas names? Well, wait until you hear Carol's husband's name. Oreo. Oh yeah, nice to meet you. I've heard a lot about you. Rudolph, you're making her feel uncomfortable. Bro's name is Rudolph. Uh -huh. No offense to anybody out there named Rudolph, but that fucking sucks. If you're gonna introduce yourself as Rudolph, I better hear the name Kevin before that, okay? Y'all fuck with Kevin Rudolph, Let It Rock featuring Lil Wayne. Rudolph, really rock. All right. Okay, I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit if you don't mind. Um, you don't miss anything because again, nothing fucking happens in this movie. Gloria is holding a meeting at the town hall about farming. Everybody's rowdy and angry and shit, but they pipe down when Christian walks in because he's their fearless, charismatic cult leader. We don't have no money to compete with the corporate farms, so what? We just asked Santa for the new equipment. <laughs> you know, the dude behind him actually thought that was like a pretty good idea. We just asked Santa for the new equipment. Yes! Yes! Also, yo, what the fuck is this kid doing at a town hall meeting for farmers? <laughs> uh, excuse me. My name is Twevo. I literally just planted a whole field of carrots. And last night, a friggin' creeper came and literally exploded all of them. What do you plan on doing to stop that? You talking about Minecraft? Yes, sir. Also... How much detonated wham should I have to serve her? Okay, and the other thing that bugs me about this movie is how they try to incorporate religion by giving like little off the cuff mentions to God and Jesus. And you know, I probably classify myself as agnostic. Did somebody say eggnog's dick? What the fuck are you doing? Get back in the basement. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I'm agnostic, as I was saying, which is the most wishy-washy belief to have, but if you're gonna be a Christian, fucking go all the way with it, right? But kind of just, like, subtly mention God here or there to remind us that it is, after all, a Christian movie. I've been blessed by God, Gloria. And, like I said, keep God in the center. But honestly, I'd rather them just go overboard with it, like a movie like The Reconciler. Like, that is, that's ideal. That's way better than this method, you know? So why'd you drop out of Harvard? Well, it just wasn't what I wanted to do. It wasn't what God wanted me to do. Right, that makes sense. Well, I should go to bed. 
I'm more tired than God was on the seventh day. Okay, now it's finally time for the main conflict of the movie. Gloria and Carol are decorating the town hall for a big Christmas party when some random lady shows up asking about Christian. I was looking for Christian. But apparently it's not some random lady. It's Christian's ex-girlfriend, Janet. That's his ex. And this is an interesting part of Christian's lore. So according to Carol, the relationship fell apart when Janet moved away for college. Things fell apart really quick after she moved away to college. She wanted to leave Snow Point and chase her dreams, but Christian was dead set on staying in Snow Point. But remember, Christian didn't decide on staying in Snow Point until he was done at Harvard Law School. I also lived in the city for a bit after college. It wasn't God's plan for my life. So let's do some math here. It takes roughly seven years of schooling to become a lawyer. And let's say Christian was practicing law for a year after he got his degree, before he decided to move back to snow point so when he moved back to snow point he must have been like 26 at the youngest and christian's long-term relationship with janet fell apart when she decided to move away for college and people usually go to college when they're 18 years old so what christian was like 27 when his girlfriend was 18 <laughs> It's just a theory, a game theory. You know, I don't want to accuse Christian of being a groomer, but, you know, art imitates life sometimes. Or, what's the saying? Art imitates what the producer of this movie did in real life. So Janet meets with Christian at a cafe to tell him that she's now engaged to another man and they're very happy together. We're getting married. That's awesome. But when she shows him the ring, he grabs her hand and hugs her, which is practically going to third base if you're a Christian. So when Gloria accidentally sees this exchange happen, she immediately assumes that he's back together with Janet and she freaks out. <laughs> And shit like this in movies always pisses me off because it's like, just talk to each other. This is the big conflict of your movie. That's what you're going with? I know what I saw and I am not a child, Carol. He's into her. I know what I saw. I'm not a child. They hugged. That means he has a crush on her. 10 minutes later, they finally talk to each other and they resolve the issue. I am so embarrassed. I would never intentionally hurt you. Now they're all saying grace at a dinner table before they chow down on a big bowl of plain spaghetti. And this is when the movie cranks the Christianity up to 11. Okay, here we go. Oh, yeah. For the Christmas story, can you tell it to me? What Christmas story is she talking about? The Bible one, about Jesus. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my mom used to tell it. <laughs> Yeah, your mom used to tell you the Bible. Okay, sweetie, you want a bedtime story? Yes, please. The Bible. I guess the Bible is a pretty good bedtime story because it's so fucking boring. Got no pictures. So this is the part of the movie where they tell the entire story of the birth of Jesus. Mary was engaged to Joseph. And I mean the entire thing. This is a long fucking scene. <laughs> What the fuck is she crying? <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just... It's just so boring. All right, we're almost done, I promise. After the Jesus story, Gloria gets a call from her assistant telling Gloria that she just got an offer for her dream job. They just told me that the vice president wants you for the position. Probably because she hasn't actually done any real work the past few days, so they're probably gonna replace her. And it's frustrating because the last hour and a half of this movie, she was like, I love snow and I love being here. I hate my old life and who I was. After everything I've seen and well, the things I heard, I just... I guess my mission changed. And then the second she gets a job offer back in DC, she immediately changes her mind and takes the job. This is a job I've always wanted. Jill already booked the plane ticket back for me to DC so I can accept it in person. But on their way to the airport, Christian decides to stop at the broke farmer's house to give the presents back to the kids. So he is a good guy after all, right? Wrong! He could have just given money to the farmer and let the dad give presents to his own kids, but no! He had to come and be the hero and give the presents to the kids himself. You see these? Yeah, your dad sold them to me because he doesn't love you. But I love you. Aww. And that's why you'll never leave this town. Did he buy them back? I just gave them back. They needed it way more than me. Of course they did, dude! They're toys for little girls! Oh my god, so at the airport, they have a quick Christian hookup, and Gloria leaves in black and white. She's super sad about this. She's crying in the plane and shit. <laughs> The Bible is so boring. So she gets to DC and starts her new job. And this is when she gets a phone call from that George guy from earlier. And he offers her a job to come and like manage the farmer's union in Snow Point or some shit. I don't fuck, I don't know and I don't care. That's interesting. So she goes back to the airport to meet the pilot who can bring her to Snow Point. This is an all weather beast. She'll get us there. Safely? You bet. 
But if we have any problems, we can let Jesus take the wheel. Okay, I am not getting on a plane if I hear a pilot say that. Uh, welcome passengers. We've got a quick flight here tonight into JFK. And, uh, tonight, we all meet God. Gloria shows up to the Christmas party, kisses Christian, and then the movie ends with the little girl, Noelle, singing a Christmas song. Okay, yeah, and they sing the entire song. Jesus fucking Christ. It's so boring. All right, that's it. That's the whole movie, all right? It's just credits. Oh, wait, hold on. Hold the phone. There's a countdown in the bottom right to a special message. Oh, my God. I swear to God, if they have, like, a Marvel-style post credit scene with Jesus, I'm buying 10 more DVDs, man. A Law for Christmas is a story of love and redemption and just showing you that God can take anyone where they are and meet them where they're at. Merry Christmas! Ah, God, sorry, I just hate eggnog well that's not true i love eggnog the drink you know i just i just need a good meal to go along with it you know which reminds me let's hear a word from today's sponsor this video is sponsored by hello fresh folks as a lot of you know my wife and i have been eating hello fresh every week for like five years now and we freaking swear by it especially this time of year it's so gross and cold outside i'd rather spend my time hanging out in a warm house sipping some hot Coco, not stuck in a checkout line at the grocery store and then pushing a buggy through a bunch of slush and then driving home in the snow. Gross. Instead of all that, you can just sign up for HelloFresh and get everything you need to whip up a fresh, tasty meal delivered right to your door. Just choose your recipes, select a delivery date, and relax knowing dinner is on the way. And I know this time of year usually gets pretty crazy with work. And after a full day, it can sometimes feel next to impossible to get a nice, delicious, wholesome meal on the dinner table. But with HelloFresh, you can turn busy weeknights into memorable mealtimes with delicious practical options designed to save you time, like their 15-minute meals, for example. And my favorite thing about HelloFresh is just the sheer amount of different recipes they have every week. HelloFresh has over 45 recipes and more than 100 seasonal add-on items to choose from every week. So it's easier than ever to find something that everyone will enjoy. And look, HelloFresh has been hooking up the citizens of Curtistown with amazing deals for years now. But I think this is the best one yet. For free breakfast for life, visit my link in the description box below or scan the QR code here. One breakfast item per box while the subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life with HelloFresh at my link. So what the heck are you waiting for? Click my link in the description right now. Free breakfast, free brekkies. Again, we've been eating HelloFresh literally for years now. And I honestly can't imagine my life without it. And there's seriously no better time to try it out than right now. So start your new year off right and click my link in the description to try out HelloFresh and get free breakfast for life. What the heck? Okay, thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video and so many others over the years. Back to me. All right, well, that was a law for Christmas. Compared to 2025, this was actually light years better than that film, but this was still by far the worst Christmas movie I have ever seen in my life. It was boring unoriginal, repetitive, stupid. People that were family. Or, I mean, it was great. <laughs> and I loved the movie. And I love Jesus and his mayonnaise. Call me Jesus. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please press the like button because believe it or not, one like equals one fancy bottle of lemonade. Also, press the subscribe button to become a valued citizen of Curtis Town, okay? It's the best place to live in the whole world. And I'm the mayor. So you have to be nice to me. It's the law. For Christmas. And yeah, happy holidays to you guys. Have a safe new year and stuff. Thank you so much for another great year. It's It was huge, man. Went to Australia. Made it on Variety's 10 comics to watch. I headlined just for laughs. Put out the special, dude. I got married. Again. So pretty fucking awesome year. Thank you so much for all the support. And I can't wait to uh, keep doing this shit next year, dude. It's going to be even better. Happy holidays. See ya. Merry Christmas!